I'm a great believer in folk tales and the value of them, and that so many of them uh, contain uh, deep wisdom uh, and deep understanding of, of human relationships. Uh, my father was an Anglo-Saxon scholar and uh, translated uh, the great legend of Beowulf, the Anglo-Saxon Viking legend about Beowulf, uh, about um, a great hero, Beowulf, and a monster that was slain and so on. Um, and uh, so I, I've been in tune with those kind of uh, stories. But they encapsulate all the emotions of humanity and all the motives of humanity, and which generation after generation, with the wisdom of experience, distill into, into real truths. Uh, the great legends are all about important, important, there's, there's nonsense about the silly things that gods did, but the great legends, the creation legend, the historical legends about uh, the wanderings of uh, around the Mediterranean and so on, all contain great truths about relationships between father and son, between husband and wife, and so on. Um, and uh, the irrelevances, as the stories are told, the irrelevances get knocked off. And so you are left with the pure, distilled essence of what the story is. That's what trying to convey, um, conveying it from generation to generation to generation does so that you're you're left with the with the essence the quintessence of what that's about and so they're very very important and full of wisdom the viking myths are full of um, of violence and fighting of one thing or another um, the Aboriginal myths, Australian Aboriginal myths, are not that way. Um, they are full of extraordinary stories um, uh, about spirits that lived within the landscape and ancestors which lived within the landscape. And they believe that at the moment of conception, when a, a human being is conceived, is when one of the spirits from a neighbouring waterhole or from a mountain or from a sand dune enters the mother's body and they f feel a great affinity to that particular particular place and they believe that when they die they know they came from it and they are sure that they're going to go back to it when they're so when you walk around the countryside um, they are moving amongst the past but also amongst the future so they're moving in through eternity the fact of the matter is that our culture is based on science these days and science consists in winnowing the truth from a lot of perhaps disconnected facts um, that's what science does but uh, as an english novelist said but nonetheless it's it's scientific truth everything is connected uh, the great thing about understanding about uh, the, the, the animals and plants and indeed the geology of, of this world, everything is connected. That's how you understand it. That's how you remember it. You remember that fish actually came from the sea and began to walk on land but could only manage it with wet skins, that they then developed uh, watertight skins which enabled them to move on to deserts and become reptiles and from then the, from the they developed feathers and they became birds and they moved on to control the temperature of the body so that they could achieve great physiological things and became mammals that makes sense it's a narrative sense it's a, it's they're not just arbitrary facts i can't remember arbitrary facts I can remember legends, I can remember stories, I can remember narratives. We are part of the natural world. We depend upon the natural world for every breath of air that we take and for every mouthful of food that we eat. If we damage the natural world, we damage ourselves. Um, and uh, the, the world is finite. It isn't infinitely big. You cannot have infinite growth going on in a finite environment. So we've got to protect the natural world and make sure that we don't overrun it so that it has its own life, so it can exist on its own terms, and then we can live together in harmony.